So Manchester, this is Dadenfall Cottage. It has two barns. The stone that they've used to make the barns, so the farmers were even guilty of it back in the day. Ah, any evidence of Roman structures? They all seem to use that big red sandstone, popular in the Manchester area, but can be quarried here too. But as I say, into the farm areas. Uh, once upon a time, all of England, Britain, was farmland. And you can literally go here and buy eggs and locally sourced honey. And I'm just going to be buying a jar of that. So let's head on. Like I say, we're investigating farms. But we're going to have a very shocking reason why farms and this community life disappear. That's our first road, going right through the bottom. So Manchester, yeah. So I just went and bought some honey in my bag. A jar of naturally sourced local honey from the bees around here. Weighs a ton as well. And that's how you did your shopping before supermarkets. That's the point I'm trying to say. Villages were self-sustainable. Obviously. And that's before mills and then mills come in village would have had a mill. Da, 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 da. And the world, was, we did know it, is underneath all this. And that's what ruined it all. The motor car. Classic that, isn't it? Austin Martin. One of the first Austin Martins. It's actually a race car, the equivalent of a boy racing car. Seventeen seventy three, that house. Background is the old workhouse. That's a chapel and school. Schools are a much later addition to the village. And if you understand what I'm trying to see, it's all mixed in. The old village road there. And the old village buildings. And as village life falls out of favour, because young people start to move to the big cities it saw the end of this community life and life as it used to be up to 300 years ago in England most villages well all villages would have had the farm structure some local cottages for people who worked also in the area like I say they're self-sustainable but they usually contain a religious site of religious worship. A church is the modern version, but back in the day, obviously, a lot of buildings in England, before the Romans this, so this is 2,000 years ago, uh, they were actually round. We actually had round houses. It's a known fact. Stonehenge is round. Um, the Romans come, invade. We have a section of time where the Romans live here. When they leave, we seem to go to square buildings. So we, we seem to have taken their ideas. You know, like, so we've knocked down a lot of Roman things in the past and rebuilt things that we need, but in, not in roundhouses, you see. So we've copied the styles that we've learnt, possibly from the Roman era. So that's um, interesting. So we're going to walk around. We'll see a bit of the villages, as I said. They usually have, the school comes later, but they'll have a pub, a market area, or a park pavilion, where they sold the goods, a market, a centre of the village, uh, a pub and a church, or a religious site, later libraries and schools. Um, you're going to see a typical scene here now, of village life, and then suddenly, where fields once were, it's not industry as such, but something else covers the land. 
incidentally, the pub that we saw in the old village had um, a chopping block. Um, it's actually chopping the heads off, which is, of course, which is don't exist. They were just women, but you could be tried for witchcraft, which is, you know, it's an unfortunate evil crime. Um, women were so convinced, and men were tried for witchcraft, so convinced were they, if they did actually commit what was called a sin or they did something, they actually believed themselves to be witches in a lot of cases. They believed that if they'd done something wrong, that they'd been possessed by evil. So they actually went along with it. And, you know, although it's horrific, they didn't try to run away. Almost like victims of, you know, people who get kidnapped and then leave the door open and they don't run away. It's that sort of scenario. So they, they controlled so much when somebody accuses them of this, they believe that they have done something wrong. So they usually confessed to witchcraft. A bit like, um, they used to arrest people for murder. And in the end, the person got so upset that they couldn't prove they were innocent, they, they, uh, they said they were guilty. Um, most of those kind of convictions all got quashed and pardoned. So I think a lot of these witches should be quashed and pardoned. Um, a lot of people think you burnt the witches in the middle of it. The actual method, and this is, an, I know some things about history as you know, the actual method for killing a witch is to drop a stone on her um, from a great height. That's true. So the blocks were usually, they were tied to the block and a massive stone was dropped on them. In some cases, the stones left on them for days and days and days until they crushed. And they keep going back to them and saying, do you, you know, do you apologize? Do you admit this? Do you admit that? And a lot of people went right to the end and just carried on being crushed. And they'd had bricks as the week went on. It's torture, evil. So, the modern world is good, but how did we get to the modern world? From the Roman past, then a belief in witches, dark ages, industrial revolutions. Let's see if we can explain some of that. You may believe things that happened in the past, there's not much you can do now. So let's not worry about it so much. You know, we don't really care so much about the witches. But let me put it in the, the, a context in this respect. It's a bit like Dynamo, the famous magician, being accused of this sort of thing, witchcraft, and, you know, sentenced to death. As crazy as that sounds to us in this modern world, that is what we're saying. Anybody who did anything unusual, anybody who just... In some cases, it was young girls who accused people of, you know, coming on to them, shall we say, you know, older men. And the minute they did, the man denied it and said that girl was possessed. She was, it's witchcraft. And a lot of cases just began that way. Or people may have got healed from something that everybody else was sick from. And they, they didn't believe that that was possible without magic. I'm just saying, so, basically... Dynamo would be doing life in prison for doing his, the tricks he did. That, that's the sort of thing I'm talking about. They don't believe or understand that things can be illusions. The belief tended to be you were being punished for something or something else was controlling the will of society and individual people because we so didn't understand everything about the reasons why we are actually here. So Manchester, there you go. I'm in the middle of a golf course. That's the real aim. Right. Over there is an area called the Ruins. But it's gone now. It's got a housing estate on top. The rural farming communities, which I was explaining, have broken down because of the modern world, including this golf course. So they've gone. But whenever golf was created, or invented, and became popular, this land will have been untouched, apart from the golf course. I noticed, running through the golf course, you've got a channel, it's part of the course, so you got to, you know, so the ball can go into the water. 
some of it's a natural stream and parts of it have just been made possibly what 1800s we'll find that date and I'll write that over the screen and I thought if I follow the trench they've dug anything that's part of that ruins site been to the place called Castle it's all cut off because of the coronavirus uh, it just says cattle are susceptible something like that but I'm disclosed at the moment so we can't get closer so I walked up thinking there'd be no one around but the golf course is shut so there actually is nobody on the golf course probably a very significant day because during the coronavirus everything's on lockdown everyone's locked in the house it's actually Easter Sunday and I'd say it's probably the most least religious Easter Sunday I've ever known because churches are actually closed too that's all I want to say about that and I want to show you this wall that I have found so basically the golf course went over the top ever was here and has never been touched since there's an area called the ruins now these stones in that trench have not been put here because that has some of them are ionized yep so that means they're old and then we go into the water and see what we find and it's all sorts really uh, bits of glass there's obviously a lot to investigate but it's all part of the roman story And that is very, very, very strong evidence to support a Roman fortification in the area. And I mean very strong, because this is all you'll find. Massive stones. So there, the golf course plonks itself on top of everything. But this, if you look very closely, there's like half a metre of the old original land still left on the road. It goes there. So to carry on. I'm very Anglo-Saxon I am sure. So an otter and his children catching a fish. That's an artist he makes them with chainsaws. I've seen them before. Don't know his name. So it's out on the internet. Uh, Manchester area in England. And the third most interesting thing The green is in there too, so that's brick in that mound that we can see perfectly. There's an old stream on one side. Look our stream. Another one. Big gap and a wall in the middle. Another stream. And another one. So some of this is part of the golf course that is older pre golf course and it's been protected so whatever's in there was in there a long time ago and still is and I can see green brick wall see the top would go but your foundation stays strong don't they and building straight lines is a Roman thing we'll piece it all together you know this one day not just something where I lost my marbles. <laughs> Seriously. Um, the weather was too extreme. We had a sort of winter hit when I decided to do this. So, I thought, I've got short days, I don't have to travel as far. But these places can be quite, you know, you know what? The weather don't like humans around here in the winter, put it that way. But we will suss out the Roman thing and link it to Manchester, like a canal, like we're doing with everything else. We'll see when we get there, when it's all completed. So then we'll have an infrastructure of Roman, leading all the way from Castleton, and Castlefield. I'll understand more, because Chatterton's got some Roman stuff too, I have to look into. But to me, it's just an unusual mound to be there. carries on straight all the way and you can see it's old and them trees are old possibly some of these things are older than me 
well, a lot of things around there will be older than me. So, I've been a bit sneaky today, and I'm going to rush through what I've got to say. I'm actually investigating Roman stuff as well. Uh, the church, the Christian church, 1577, and it's as old as 1480. The area is reported to be a massive Roman area, and I found loads of red stone structures that have been rebuilt. The farm we started on, 1488, grade 2, listed, and is one of the oldest buildings in Manchester. The car was an Austin A35, 1957. The Unitarian Ainsworth Workhouse was as old as 1715. Harwood Golf Club, 1926. Four local shopkeepers founded this par 70. It means you've got a 70 par small area golf course. From the edge of the Pennine Moors. Cocky Moor translate into Coseum or cock meaning red earth. That is a Roman word. Golf's origins are from Scotland in the 1400s, but recent finds may be that it's a Roman sim similar game comes from Rome. It's actually a Middleton parish, Ainsworth. <coughs> yeah, the word comes from Cockermore and it's Celtic. So once again, I'm feeling Roman history is right under my feet. I'm deep into around 1190 and 1210 AD that's the current time I'm reading uh, land ownership documents uh, if I'm right it's big what I've found very big uh, I've got to keep it top secret and I'm not messing about I'm studying Oxford and Cambridge documents at the moment so we can find out the old history of all these things As I said, I've been looking through some old documents and archives. Uh, people of Ainsworth, it's a quiet rural village now, and there was an industrial revolution. Um, but there was industries around this area, weaving, mining, quarrying, etc. Uh, the villagers would often work outside the village. Uh, they'd walk along Ainsworth Hall Road and Wood Lane to get to the mills on the new road that's what we're saying the new roads for the road for the cars uh, down Red Lane and factories on Red Bridge now Red Lane has appeared because Red Stone has been dug from underneath on Red Lane uh, and that's what we can see evident in this brick that I keep saying is popping up everywhere it's also evident as the chalk dust is used for the concrete, so it's all, it's a red dusty concrete as well. Um, it's actually the Church of Middleton, the Diocese of Middleton, actually owned Ainsworth Village. And it was they had a big dispute over the land of Cockymore when they were searching for old artifacts from the Romans. The church is around 1400 on that site. Roundhouse is a type of house uh, has a circular plan, usually with a conical roof. The later part of the 20th century, modern, modern designs of roundhouse and eco buildings were constructed with materials such as cob, cordwood, straw, bale, and uh, walls made of mud and clay. A reciprocal frame and green roof. The roundhouse was the standard form of building uh, in Britain from the Bronze Age throughout the Iron Age. In some areas, 
well into the sub-Roman period. People built walls made of either stone or wooden posts joined by wattle and daub panels. They call it wattle and daub, it's like a plasterboard. Uh, topped with a conical thatched roof. These ranged in size, uh, some were less than 5 metres in diameter and some over 15 metres in diameter, quite large. The Atlantic roundhouse, brock and wheelhouse styles, they were used in Scotland. The remains of many Bronze Age roundhouses can still be found scattered across open heathland, uh, such as Dartmoor. They, they look like stone hut circles, just markings on the ground and some foundations buried in the mud usually. Early archaeologists determined what they believed were the characteristics of these structures, um, so they gave them certain rules if you found one, by the layout of the post holes in the ground. Although a few timbers were found preserved in bogs, the rest have been sort of postulated is the word. Uh, by experimental archaeology, so they've been brought to life by archaeologists, um, which has tried different techniques to demonstrate the most likely form and function of the buildings. For example, experiments have shown that a conical roof with a pitch of 45 degrees would have been the strongest and most efficient design. A man called Peter J. Reynolds also demonstrated that although a central fire would have been lit in the middle of it. Inside, um, that's for heating and cooking. There could have not been a smoke hole in the top of the apex of the roof. Uh, this would have caused an updraft of heat and fire. Uh, that would have rapidly set fire to the thatch roof. Instead, smoke would have been allowed to accumulate around the ceiling and it harmlessly would seep out uh, slowly through the thatched roof. Although I would argue in England it's a very wet place, especially Dartmoor, um, is the roof waterproof? So maybe that theory doesn't hold weight, uh, literally. <laughs> there you go. But that's how it works. The archaeologists find it and they have to determine how these things worked and bring it to life with scientific sort of theory. Yeah, theoretical ideas. So he thinks the roof would set on fire. But I think if you left it so the air could escape, it wouldn't be waterproof. So you straight away you set up arguments. There you go. Not the sort of arguments you fall out over, by the way. In science... Someone might correct your theory, it's up to you then to revise your theory, shake hands with them, move on. That's how these things work. Uh, much of the earlier supposition was confirmed or denied at a stroke uh, by the, ex the experts debating these things. The finding of a set of Bronze Age, Bronze Age roundhouses at the archaeological dig at Must Farm in Cambridgeshire, that's in England, where samples of all the materials from posts to walls, roofs, everything, uh, were all found. It had collapsed and charred, but still in situation. So after 3,000 years, they could really get some details on how these things actually were put together and you know confirm or deny once and for all who's right and who was wrong. Uh, new designs of roundhouses are again being built in Britain and elsewhere. Um, in the UK straw bale construction or carved wood walls with reciprocal frame green roofs There is one manufacturer of contemporary roundhouses in Cheshire using modern materials and engineering to bring the circular floor plan back for a modern living experience. The roundhouse is an early example of a modern roundhouse dwelling.
which was built in Pembrokeshire, uh, on the Pembrokeshire coast, it's a national park in Wales. Uh, you can have all these without planning permission, apparently, as part of the Brith de Moor village, that's Welsh, which was discovered by the authorities in 1998. It is constructed from a wooden frame of hand cut Douglas fir forest thinnings with cardwood infill and receptacle frame turf roof based on a this is hard to actually explain it's based on a permaculture principles uh, mainly from local and natural resources that means you can keep rebuilding the house so like i say if the roof wasn't waterproof maybe you have to replace it every two years but not made to last forever and that's because it's from the local surrounding woods you get the materials anyway so it's not a cut it's not about cost it's more about the labor back in the day and you had time to do the labor back in the day um, it was subject to lengthy planning battles the modern version including cart injunctions to force its demolition before finally receiving a planning approval because it's been in england for so long um, so it's got planning permission to for three years in September 2008 so they found a house that someone had built a replica without planning permission but they got refused uh, permission to knock it down or demolish it because it's a traditional roundhouse and it's in England but well, it was in Wales this one so they had to fight for the right to knock it down and they didn't it got a three-year extension and that was in 2008 and I think basically that guy has got away with it so he didn't need planning permission because it's a roundhouse it's a traditional, it's a bit, a bit like putting a tent up, technically. Okay, so the main structure um, of some found in Europe uh, divided internally into separate areas for the family and their animals. Uh, had separate entrances, so it was like splitting half down the middle, animals in one half. Uh, the roof is conical, made of rye straw on a wooden frame. They have no chimney, the smoke from the kitchen fire seeps out through the thatch, so that seems to be okay abroad, but they don't have the rainfall, especially Spain. It's like a desert, isn't it? Sometimes, you know, it mainly is. As well as living space for humans and animals, a plaza has its own bread oven, workshops for wood, metal and leather work, and a loom. Only the eldest couple of an extended family have their own bedroom. So there's one bedroom, everyone else sleeps in the main room. Animals are kept in a section. Uh, they shared with the youngest children. So the babies were kept with the parents and the rest of the family slept in the hay loft in the roof space. So it must have been safe if they let people sleep in the roof space. So of course a lot more accidents and disasters would have happened years ago. Modern roundhouses are being built, as we I just said. Uh, one at Dancing Rabbit Eco Village, that's in Rutleg, Missouri, and that's built of cob. That's America. Okay, peace out, Manchester. And an update. Oh, part of the Roman playlist. We're back on. It's easier round here to look for things you see because I'm not going to keep mentioning coronavirus, but everybody's aware of it that we're all locked down so i have to find areas that are open and very few people but still fall within a distance from my house where i can consider it exercise so there you go if you're into science you know you're pretty safe anyway but i'm not going to give people tough advice it's just i know how to i even stay downwind of people you know i make sure they're downwind of me so that anyone sneezes it doesn't bother so hard to me so there you go that's it. That's a tip, by the way. Try and always stay out the window of other people's breathing and things like that. Okay, peace out, Manchester.